Hi everybody, my YouTube friend 3535Kevin uh, recommended this article and this is posted on beforeitsnews.com. So this is written by a Robert M. Barber and he's quoting uh, somebody else. It's reprinted from something called DM6. So according to this DM6, there are several safe zones in the U.S. Kansas, Montana, Colorado, Wyoming, Eastern Arizona, New Mexico, Northern Florida, Southwest Georgia, Tennessee. While much of Europe will not experience major changes, it will be an area of extreme seismic and volcanic activity, not a safe zone. Other safe zones include most of Central and Eastern Canada. That would be the prairies in Canada and also Eastern Canada and Australia. Everywhere else will experience massive shifting of the earth, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis and coastal subsidences. There are several earth changes related maps showing the Mississippi Sea and the subsidence in California, Oregon, Washington, and Arizona. A few show a significant subsidence in South Florida, including the Keys. No, I have not created maps based on my visions. Will I? I'm getting a no internally. I'm also getting that Long Island will be largely gone east of a line from Block Island South. Yes, the Hamptons will be gone too. On the pole shift in June, July, August, September, October, November, and December of this year, 2011, and that goes along with the um, predictions for the LNN, or whatever you want to call it, the brown dwarf. They're calling it a comet, but I'm saying it's a brown dwarf and the alignments that are going to cause these major destructions on planet Earth. This goes along with these dates. Anyhow, there will be significant solar flares several times per month, and we've seen lots of those already. The North Pole has already wandered three degrees eastward, and that has not alarmed anyone as the pole has been wandering for decades. In June, the pole will wander another three to four degrees eastward due to several solar flares. In July, more solar flare activity will drive the pole eastward four to five degrees. This will start to alarm the authorities. In August, more solar flare activity will drive the pole eastward five to seven degrees. In September, we will get a solar tsunami flare and the pole will shift 12 to 15 degrees suddenly. And this goes along with the dates for Comet Ellen and, and what has been predicted with the first pole shift, according to many, uh, being September the 26th or, or thereabout. This will make the Euro-Asian landmass the most northerly landmass on Earth. Europe will be in the subarctic zone. The UK and Ireland will still be warmed by the Gulf Stream, but they will have colder winters. When the poles shift suddenly, the entire Arctic Ocean will shift into what is now eastern central Russia and it will collapse beneath the sudden weight. The Russian Ocean will connect to the Black Sea, making Europe an island continent. The Mississippi Sea will be created during this sudden pole shift, as will the Isles of California et al., South Florida, Cuba, Haiti, DR, Jamaica, Caymans, and Puerto Rico. All of North Africa sinks to the Atlas Mountains all of the Sahara Desert, most of China, Japan, Philippines, Borneo, Indonesia, Bangladesh, coastal India, coastal Pakistan, 
coastal Iran. This all happens in September 2011, and again that goes along with the first pole shift predicted by many, uh, Nine Nania, Terrell 03, and many, many others that are reading the Elenin charts. And many are saying Elenin is not a comet, but a brown dwarf. There are several tsunami flares coming in September, and still more in October, November, and December. In October, the Amazon River will become the Amazon Sea. There will be more destruction in China and Japan. What is left of Africa will be broken into three large islands with significant salt water seas between them. In November, Iceland will sink beneath the waves, as will the entire Saudi Arabia, Arabian Peninsula, Jordan, southern Iraq, southern Syria, Damascus will become a seaport all of Israel, southern Lebanon. The Caspian Sea will link up with the Persian Gulf and Tehran will cease to exist. Iran will cease to be a threat to the world. In December, the destruction of China and Japan and the Koreas and the far eastern Russia will be complete with some islands sticking up from current higher elevations all of the cities in these places will be utterly destroyed. Madagascar and Sri Lanka will both sink. Taiwan, Okinawa, Iwo Jima, Guam, and Micronesia will all be spared. We have seven months of massive earth upheavals coming that are all being driven by massive solar flares that activate our tectonic plates. Everywhere on Earth is going to experience earthquakes, tsunamis, tidal waves, volcanoes reawakened and new. Mexico City will experience a 14 plus earthquake. Oh my goodness. Now remember with every one of these numbers that it goes up, it's not just a little bit, it's like 10 times the previous number. So like if you had a 9 earthquake, then t a 10 earthquake is like 10 times as strong as the 9. And an 11 earthquake is 10 times that of a 10, and etc. So that would be just un unbelievable. It lasts for 5 to 6 minutes. Same with China, Japan, the Philippines, but multiple times. In the U.S., the New Madrid Fault will experience a 16 plus, oh my goodness, that will cause the western side of the Mississippi River to subside. This will cause the Gulf of Mexico to flow into the exposed fault and cause a subsidence on the eastern side of the river. Austin and Dallas will be seaports, Biloxi, Mississippi will be the eastern end of the Mississippi Sea, Houston, Memphis, New Orleans, and most cities along the Mississippi River will be gone. When we get to 2012, all of these changes will be complete, but that is when the diseases will hit the survivors hard. And I've heard that before, that there's going to be major diseases. I wonder if that's coming from the radioactivity. By the end of 2012, there will be 300 million people left, mostly in the U.S., Canada, and Australia. Canada will become part of the U.S., as will Mexico. Well, I think it's already planned as well. This means that 6.7 billion people are leaving to return to spirit. When the pole shift happens, Canada will have a climate similar to the U.S. now, and the U.S. will have the equator running through it and have a tropical climate. No more hurricanes or tornadoes. They shift towards the new Africa. Australia also moves closer to the equator and becomes warmer. Most of the surviving Europeans and South Americans come to the U.S., but, but about a third go to Australia. For some reason, the U.S. Virgin Islands 
is also a safe zone or I would not be here. There are practically no survivors from Africa. Now that's interesting because there's a website out there, Survive 2012, and they're going to the highest mountains in South Africa as they think that's going to be the super safe place. So, I mean, once they come, if they do survive, there's going to be nothing left of Africa according to this. The Middle East, India, Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, or China, that is most of the people on the planet. There will be more severe solar flares in 2012, but I'm not getting the information now. In October or November, I will be able to add more for the first half of 2012. My impression is that earth changes in 2012 are going to be finishing changes and will not be as threatening to the survivors. And again, that's from the source DM6. You are now in the know. The 2012 safe area will be located right smack dab in the center of the USA near the city of Smith Center, Smith County, Kansas, the safest area in the world. The 2012 safe area, and that's a trademark, needs $17 million right now. Gifts and loans are accepted. Well, you know, you had that man that was collecting all that money for the, um, for the um, apparent, um, what do you call it, end of the world doomsday prediction that didn't occur. Maybe he can raise some money and, and give it over to this, these people here. The planned grand opening is ASAP. The 2012 safe area has no earthquakes, tsunamis, hurricanes, coastlines, flooding, mountains, volcano eruptions, tornadoes, severe windstorms, military bases, missile silos, and an elevation of 1,800 feet. And he's given his phone number. If you want to be safer than anyone else, call me. And he's given his phone number right there. So very, very interesting. I don't know what to take of this. I've not heard of this before, but um, I think that um, we will post it and see what others think. Traders Beware. Thanks for watching and thanks to 3535 Kevin for pointing this article to our direction.